you have a revelation of the, the value of a thing, the pursuit of that thing may not be there. The energy and the impetus. Are we together now? If I tell you the value of a job to your well-being, then it will sponsor and give you the energy to want to look for one. Until we understand the value of divine presence, that the Lord walking with a man, the ability to have, to host, to attract, and to retain the presence of God is the richest asset anyone can have on earth. Are we together? The manifested presence of God. The Bible is full of the privileges and the advantages that show up in the life of any individual and any people who are able to successfully host the presence of God. I will run through a few scriptures to show you the things that happen in the lives of men on account of the fact that God was with them. Very, very powerful. Genesis 39, very quickly, maybe three or four for the sake of time. And then we establish a few things and pray. Genesis 39, this was the story of Joseph. We'll read verse 2. Genesis 39 and verse 2. That Joseph was in prison. And yet, here's what the Bible has to say about him. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. So there is a relationship between the presence of God and the prosperity of the saints. To prosper means to excel. To prosper means to do well. That the reason behind the prosperity of Joseph, even though he was in prison, there was a factor that distinguished him. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man, the Bible declares, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Regardless the fact that he was not an Egyptian, there was a distinguishing effect of the presence of God upon him. And he was a prosperous man. Let's go to verse 21. Same chapter. In verse 21, 39 verse 21, again the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph. So prosperity is tied to the presence of God. Number two, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. That when a man truly desires mercy and favor, then God must be with you. Because the Lord was with a young Jewish boy, God showed him mercy and even showed him favor even while he was in prison. Are we together? Number three. Exodus chapter 33. From verse 13. I'm running through scripture to show you the value. The value of the presence of God. Exodus 33. 13 and 14. Now therefore I pray you. Moses is praying. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee and I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Verse 14, hallelujah. And he said, the gift I will give you to end this confusion as far as leadership is concerned. The gift that I will give you. These are a stiff necked people. They will not listen to you ordinarily. But here is the secret to your rest. My presence. God is speaking to someone already. My presence. More than your skill. My presence. More than education. My presence will go with you. And as a result I will give you rest. Is this not what you are looking for? rest from all the troubles and the vicissitudes of life where you lie down and you can't sleep he makes me to lie down in green pastures his presence connected to rest when Jesus showed up in John chapter 8 and verse 29 here's what he said John chapter 8 and verse 29. 
Jesus, when he showed up, here's what he had to say. He said, and he that sent me is with me. My father had not left me alone. For I always do the things that please him. He that sent me is with me. I don't need to fear. I don't need to fear. I'm not alone. When he sent me, he went with me. The Bible says, the Lord and his spirit had sent me. Are we blessed? Let's look at two more scriptures. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. Daniel 3, 25. We'll just read 25 for the sake of time. Remember the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says on account of their allegiance, their refusal to bow to this 90 feet statue that was built. They said, O king, will not be careful to answer you in this matter. Our Lord will deliver us. And the Bible says they made the fire seven times hotter to the extent that those who threw them were burnt. And yet these gentlemen entered into that fire. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart for the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Three men thrown. But they suddenly saw the fourth man. The divine presence. It was the same presence that was with Daniel. When he was in the lion's den. Let me tell you this. The cure for fear. And the ability to pass through life. And pass through challenges. And they look at you. And they may never. You bring you went through this. Yes sir. The presence of God has a system of immunity. It can cover you. Are we together now? Immunity. In 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12, I wish I had time. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12. Do you know there is a dimension of reverence and honor that comes to the life of an individual when you carry divine presence? Read with me please, verse 12. Ready? Please read. And Saul was afraid of David. Why? Because the Lord was with him. How can a king be afraid of a young harmless teenager? What did Saul see? That made him a young boy. What would David do to a king? But the Lord was with him. There is divine presence you can carry. And every devil, human and spiritual. The fear of you will come upon everyone is a spirit of reverence there is an aura of reverence upon a man when you carry divine presence now isaiah 43 this will be a safe landing place tonight isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 let this be a prophecy for someone and let it be a word of hope for someone but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear not. In spite of the times that we live in, fear not. In spite of the noisome pestilences, fear not. In spite of wars and rumors of wars, fear not. In spite of the fear, what will happen to my children, fear not. For I have redeemed you, he says. I have called you. Even by name, you are mine. Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Just verify if I am there. Once I am there, stop being afraid. Even if the boat is going up and down, check if Jesus is there. If you find him, even if he's sleeping in the boat, find rest. Trouble starts for you if he's not there. If you are alone, then you will be afraid. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That's the only assurance you need. You don't need to verify if the boat is working correctly. You just be sure that I am there. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, 
Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. And the simple secret is I am with you. I am with you. And the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them. That's the secret. Divine presence. I learned this in life and I learned this in ministry. And the presence of God became and it still remains my highest pursuit and my highest obsession. I assure you the presence of God will give you what money cannot buy. The presence of, give, of God will give you what your background cannot give you. Divine presence. The rich asset of God's presence. The Shekinah of God at work in the life of a man. At work in the life of a woman. One time this timid disciple called Peter listen carefully Peter was just an ordinary fisherman but this man had been with Jesus so much he had received a rub off of that presence a time came the Bible says that same man his shadow it was not his shadow it was the effulgence of the presence of God from him that he passed people who were ill who were sick divine presence The one thing that Satan will fight in the life of a believer is the presence of God. He knows what happens to you when you, the presence of God is not with you. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. The psalmist knew this and he said, cast me not away from you. you I, I would give up the throne, but cast me not away from your presence. He says, and take not your spirit from me. When God walks with a man, when a man can secure divine presence, it becomes a secret to an invincible life. You will experience dimensions of victory and favor in a way that you will not imagine. When you carry divine presence, men will be compelled to help you. They will be compelled to support what you stand for. It's a charm-like sense of attraction. Even you, you will not be able to explain. Why are they interested in me? Presence. Let that presence come upon your business and you will marvel and wonder what happens. Let that presence come upon your ministry. It will not just be the oratory. It's not just what you are saying that there is a glory that is upon it. Let that presence come upon the work that you do. Was it not under the influence of that presence that a rod that had no root, yet it budded? A rod that had no root. Don't tell me you are not connected. I don't know anybody. A rod without root, it was not connected to the earth. Nothing produces until it is connected to the earth. That was the instruction. But in God's presence, the rules are, there, there's an exemption. That a rod not connected to the earth. If you are that rod, even if you are not connected to the earth, you can still blossom because you are under the influence of that presence. Hallelujah. The glory of his presence resting upon you, distinguishing you, bringing beauty and honor and glory to your life in a way that will marvel you. But for tonight, very quickly, I'm not just interested in marketing the presence of God alone, but I hope by the Spirit of God that God will help us to show us the protocol. There is a protocol for accessing divine presence. As important as the revelation is, if we just stop in celebrating the possibilities that come when he is there, it may not profit us. We must, there must be a road map, a pathway that can lead anyone from where you are to that realm where you are able to access and attract divine presence. If you're with me, say amen. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Shalakato sadly brendeko shidaka hasiakata. Open my eyes, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. There is a protocol and there is a formula that can help men carry the presence of God. Many years ago, when I knew that the call of God was upon my life, I prayed a sincere prayer. I said, Lord, do not send me with just a sermon. Do not send me with just a message. The world that you're going to be sending me to need more than a message, more than a sermon, there must be a divine backing, the reality of your presence, producing tangible results, edging your impact in the life of the hearers, the listeners, cutting across the time and space and blessing people. Grant me access to the gift of your presence. And then I had an encounter. Please listen. In one of these encounters, I had a voice and he said, son, from today, I give you my presence as a gift. And then all of a sudden, I look in that vision and I'm seeing this being standing like an angel. And he said, this angel will walk with you. And I said, what is his name? And the voice said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. I don't mean to brag, but when it has to do with the issues of the presence, believe me, I know what I'm saying. The signs, the wonders, prosperity, increase, influence, chasing after these things directly is a waste of time. It's going to be a journey that will inevitably end up in humiliation. The secret is to seek him. When you find him, everything connected to him will come. It will gravitate towards you. Divine presence is the key. It is the pursuit that is worth our time and worth everything. But what then is the formula? How come certain people seem to carry very superior dimensions of God's presence? When you listen to them, it's like there is a touch of heaven upon them. You know that this is not a man talking alone. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 13. The Lord is speaking to me that there are three people here. He's been trying to call you. His call is upon your life. But he's been trying to draw you to deeper levels of intimacy. And the Lord is saying he brought you to this meeting because it's time for you to know him in a deeper level more than church more than religion more than a sunday service i don't know who that person is and those people but i'm speaking to you this is by the spirit the lord is saying it's time for the distractions in your life it's time for these distractions please help them there are many distractions clamoring for your attention but the lord is saying that all i want is to help you know me because when you find me all the things that you are seeking for that men claim to be able to give you they can only be found in my presence I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Ah. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The first key, please listen to me. The first key, if you really want to host the manifested presence of God in your life. By the way, the issue of the manifested presence of God has nothing to do with being in ministry. 
it has nothing to do with being a man of God, apostle, prophet, pastor at all. The first key is an encounter that produces a hunger and a passion for God. Love, love, only desperate lovers of God will be able to host this dimension of his presence. And ye shall seek me and only find me when ye seek me with all of your heart. So there is a relationship between presence and your heart. Remember the discourse between Jesus and the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. The discussion started with the issue of water and eventually the issue of worship came into it. Are we together now? And he said, you people worship what you do not know. For salvation is of the Jews. And then Jesus said, the hour is coming. And now is. dimension And we are almighty that from this moment on, this place will become a miracle center. Every sinner who will come here, let that sinner be saved. If they bring the sick here, let the sick be healed. that no matter what is present in your life if the presence of God is not part of it you do not have anything no matter what is present in your life if the divine presence of God is not there then you really do not have anything hallelujah
But when you love, when you give, your, your, whole, your whole life revolves around the object of the love, not what you will get. Lord, you see what I'm doing for you. Don't forget about me. You are God. Most times, those things look very spiritual. But that thing is an investment. It's just a business. Whether you bless me or not, can I really leave you? I love you more than this. I wish I had time. I would have shown you a very interesting parable in scripture. The Bible says that a few people were hired to go and walk. Some went to walk in the morning. And the basis for their walking was wages. Not their love for the owner of the husband man. Are we together now? They negotiated for a denary. All right, you go and walk. And then at the 11th hour, he saw some people sitting down and said, why sittest thou idle? And he said, no man employ us. He said, go to the vineyard. They did not negotiate money. They went because of their love and trust for the person. At the end of the time, they paid all of them the same. And the ones who started early were angry. They said, no, we started working since morning. And he said, your basis of coming to work with me was salary. I gave you. These ones went to work without any negotiation. Now I choose what I want to give them. This is a mystery in the spirit. So you come to God and say, Lord, I will serve you. Provided you give me three cars. He will say, fine, that's a deal. I will honor it. But someone comes to say, Lord, you took me from the wilderness. If I never get anything from you, I am grateful. And God says, you are doing this for me. Now let me decide what your reward will be. When Mordecai saved the king, it was not because he wanted to be exalted. Haman was focused on all kinds of gifts. But Mordecai did it because of his love for the king. But payday came. The chronicles were opened. And he said, what shall be done? It is when, when a rich man decides how to bless you, that is good news for you. Because sometimes you yourself will not know how the kind of blessing that you think should come to you. That's why it will look like God just picks people from nowhere, like we say. No, no. It's the reward for lovers. There is wages for workers, but there is the reward for lovers. Again, there is the wages for workers. I agree with you, oh God. These are my terms. And God says, fine. But someone else says, Lord, I love you. There is nothing, there is no one. Who compares with you? I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure when I worship you, my Lord. Mm. Are we together? You want to attract the presence of God? You want to be sure of his Shekinah walking with you, backing you and clearing ways for you. The secret is not to use God. Don't use God to get things. Don't use God to make a name. No. Love him sincerely. Love him genuinely. Love him truthfully. You see why I was blessed when I came in? And Pastor Nath was leading in worship and everywhere was just saturated. But you see, as powerful as that atmosphere was, the Holy Spirit would come and scan the motifs of men. He knows that men are very deceptive. So while you are crying, he looks beyond your tears and looks at your heart and finds out that there is a big jeep there that you are hoping to use that tears to get. And he will love you for the diligence to, don't, please don't be, I hope you are not offended. Or he checks there and he finds out that there is a desperate promotion. That's what sponsored that rolling. And he says, no. But he comes to someone and finds himself. Your heart reflects his face back to him. This is why I bow down. This is why I wake up in the morning. Primarily. Every time I have the privilege of talking to the Lord, I tell him, I say, Lord, you have been good to me. If you never bless me again, I still owe you my life. And I owe you everything, sincerely. And this is not just some preacher's talk because I'm holding a mic. It is true. 
And then you step back and watch the lover of your soul. When God reveals himself as the lover of your soul, you know the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. When you truly become that bride, according to scripture, the assignment of the bride is to adorn and honor and promote and honor her husband. And then when you've done so as that faithful bride, then he shows you he's a responsible husband. He does not show you he's a responsible husband by buying things. He gives you his name. He gives you access to all that he has. So we're gathered here tonight and many following from around the world challenging ourselves that even though we live in turbulent times, we live in times where filling our lives with petitions and desires become, it, it looks justifiable. We must return to the place of security, true security. We must return to the place of his presence. We must love him sincerely. Christianity is not just a religion that mandates that you follow a founder called Jesus Christ. No, Christianity is a desperate relationship, it's a pursuit. I'll forever be chasing after you with my entire life. Lord, I'll be chasing after you. No matter how far you lift me, I'll still forever be chasing after you. Ah. Regardless the crown of my head, I'll be chasing after you. No matter what name you give me, I'll forever be chasing after you. Someone make that your commitment tonight. Lord, I'll be chasing after you. Whether it's from the wilderness, I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. So when you sit on that throne and men look at you and give you the credit for such an amazing life, successful in business, successful intellectually, successful in terms of family, well-behaved children, rest round about. And they say, what is the secret to this kind of life? Are you not a Nigerian? And the flesh would want to use the opportunity and make a name for itself. And quickly you remember that I'll forever be chasing now. You still go on your knees as a CEO. Yes, sir. I'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. We're going to pray shortly. I came tonight hoping that God will infect you with a hunger and a passion. Yes, you will receive. Yes, you will be healed. Yes, you will experience breakthroughs. I tell you, he calls those things children's bread. Children's bread. As big as it looks, he still calls it children's bread. I want to know you. I want to seek your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to call you Lord. More than preaching for you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you Lord. Would you dance with me, oh lover? 
of my soul to the song of all song the songs of Solomon would you dance with me oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs divine presence making the difference causing everything around you to flourish divine presence when the rain comes then the plants begin to blossom and grow when the rain comes that rain of his presence upon your life upon the wilderness please listen to me more than principles I am a teacher of principles. I am a teacher of mysteries. But no mystery and no principle will replace him. The presence. If it's not in your presence. If it's not by your hand. If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. It's in you. It's in you. For everything I need is in you. The Lord brought me here tonight by the grace of God to charge our hearts. I mean it when I tell you this. There are certain levels of infirmity that have been sent. I'm not even talking of COVID-19. Wicked, evil diseases that come as devourers, that come as wasters, that come as destroyers. There is no amount of drug supplement on its own that can drive spirits. It can correct body parts. It can help the body function well. But there are spirits that only the presence of God can drive away. Divine presence will profit you all wise. There are arrows that fly by day. You wake up in the morning in peace and return with trouble. You have no business. Conclusions made in the realm of the spirit where you did not participate but you become a victim of it. The presence of God becomes like a shield. Shala Katoski Apa. Enchantments against you, against your children, that this woman will not live past 2023. And while all that rubbish is going on, you don't need to know, you don't need any dream revealing anything. Let the presence shield you. You will walk in the presence of your enemies as though it did not exist. There is an immunity. No matter how accurate you are, you cannot know who is against you and who is for you. The presence is what secures you. Arrows that fly by day. Noisome pestilences. It was quite a turbulent flight coming. Quite a very, very turbulent flight. I think probably one of the most turbulent flights I've had in a very, very long time because of the weather. I tell you sincerely, I was sleeping all through. God is my witness. My heart did not beat once. All you need to do is verify. Is Jesus there? If he's there, find rest. That was the mistake of the people. That's why Jesus rebuked them. Let us go to the other side. And he was sleeping. And when a storm of wind, the Bible says, it became boisterous. If those guys were patient, would have seen something about God we never knew. Jesus was sleeping. Will he die? In the storm? Maybe we would have read something else that happened to the boat. But their unbelief, when he woke up, he said, people, even if you don't respect the boat, respect me, the fact that I am in that boat. There are times you may not come out of the storm. Just be sure that Jesus is there with you. Find rest. Ah, 
And the angel appeared and told them there shall be no loss. And they were led safely to the island called Melita. In the name of Jesus, I speak to someone. I don't know what may be happening around your family, around your children. Maybe there is a woman of valor, of virtue, of excellence. There is a mother here under the sound of my voice. You came for this conference whilst you are sitting down. You are not even listening to what I'm saying because of the load on you. Find rest. His presence. Apostle, you don't know what they've said about me and my children. You don't know the trouble that my husband has right now. I'm holding a document from his office. He may not even last July. Who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? I believe him. Divine presence. When he holds you, when he, he is there, you can find rest. Apostle, I lost a lot of money through the pandemic. My shop, my business, right now I don't even know. There are kidnappings everywhere. I'm not even sure what school to send my children again because I don't know where it's safe. In truth, you may not have the kind of safety you desire. Territorially speaking, the only place of safety right now is the ark. That ark. When he beckoned on them to enter that ark, the rains came. And yet there was safety. Can I tell you this? I say it with every sense of respect and every sense of responsibility. No matter how responsible a parent is, there is only so much you can do to protect your children in the times that we live now. You can send your child to school. You can take care of that person, but your child is a free moral agent. He can still turn and become something that you may not like. But if you secure them with that divine presence, you can go to bed no matter what you hear. The Lord is speaking to someone. Please find rest. You are already having high blood pressure because of all kinds of worries. What will happen? What will happen? He says, which of you by worrying can add a cubit to his hair? Worrying is not what will pay the rent. We are not irresponsible people when we teach these things. We know that these needs are real. We know that the challenges in the times are real. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. The keeper of Israel does not sleep. He does not slumber. He's watching over you, watching over your family, watching over all that concerns you. More than you can even watch yourself. Find rest. Please prophesy to yourself. My soul find rest. One more time. Say my soul find rest. Yes. Over the financial issues. Over your children. Over your ministry. Find rest. Let his divine presence give you rest. You know let me tell you this. Tomorrow hopefully we are going to look at those aspects. When the presence of God. If you can capture the presence of God. There are many things that you need that you do not know. The assignment of his divine presence among other things is to scan through your life and find out the things that are needed for life and godliness. Whether you are aware or not, the divine presence will keep introducing them till your life looks like the Garden of Eden. Beauty and glory. You may not even know that you need certain things because we see in part and we prophesy in part. You may be focusing on the things you feel are the ones that move you forward. But when his divine presence comes, it's like a scanner. Oh, this person does not have enough joy. This person, I see there is a threat to his long life. I see there is a threat to this. And his divine presence begins to make all these things available. You will find things in your life you did not remember praying for. How did they come? And God said, when you invited me, you also invited those things. 
When you invited me, you invited joy unspeakable, even full of glory. When you invited me, you invited judgment over the wicked. When you invited me, you invited speed. When you invited me, you invited favor. When you invited me, you invited breakthrough. When you invited me, you invited influence. When you invited me, you invited fame. When you invited me, you invited prosperity. From whence come these things, oh God? And he says, they come with me. You seek them individually, you may find them with side effects. Side effects of the loss of your spiritual fire. Side effects of your passion for God. Side effects of valuable relationships. But when you seek him, you find everything. Is that not a good bargain? Rather than seeking money in a way that will make me leave God, lose relationships with your family, and at the end of your life, there is nothing in your life that was worth the pursuit. I rather seek him truly with all my heart, love him truly with all my being, follow hard after him more than what this life can bring. And then in that hunger and in that pursuit, loving him sincerely, you attract divine presence. John 14, 21. Let me introduce the next point and then we'll pray. John chapter 14. The second key. You want the manifested presence of God in your life. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them not just is aware of them and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me and he that loveth me so shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is it there in your Bible? Will manifest myself to him. Why? Because he keeps my commands. Let me tell you this. Truly, God invests superior dimensions of his presence in the lives of those who truly seek to obey him. The passion to please God is a secret of attracting, retaining, securing his presence. That all about your life is what brings glory to him. Glory to him. Hallelujah. Everything about your life seeks to bring him glory. You don't have your own agenda. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Whilst you're sitting, I'd like you to pray. Just two prayers for the night. I'd like you to cry before the God of your salvation. Lord, everything that has stolen my heart away from you in this conference. I pray a restoration of my love and my fire. Please pray. We're wrapping up. You're talking to the Lord of glory, the king of your life. Is someone praying? Let this be from the depth of your heart. Please pray. We're done for tonight. Pray. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart. I will lay down my idols. You're praying. The thrones I have made. And everything that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you. To no other God but you, Lord. Are you praying? Shalan Sali Katapraduya. Lord, I will worship you. 
nothing hands have made but you Please pray. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours. We are praying. To yours, oh Lord. Lord, I hand over everything to you. Please pray. It's not a foolish prayer. We just have two or three minutes. Yes. But let this conference be a rich one. I love you with all my heart. Nothing and no one sustains the ability to take your place. Halan sala bragados yete kete brada gete. Please pray. Please pray. Everything. Everything. Lord, you are everything to me, everything, everything, Lord, you are everything. spare me two minutes you are in this place you came for this conference please listen and you are saying apostle even though I know that time is gone but sincerely my relationship with Jesus Christ I need to make Jesus Lord of my life there are others who may be saying I gave my life to Jesus but in the last one year in the last two years my life has gone haywire the vicissitudes of life have pushed me. Wherever you are for the sake of time, still respecting the COVID protocol, I'd like you to come and stand here. Very quickly, I want to pray for you. We have just one minute. Holy Spirit, carry me. While they are coming, while they are coming, please listen. We are going to pray for ourselves every mother here this is a women conference so please permit my bias for the mothers you're going to pray for your husband and pray for your children lord they become seekers of divine presence is someone praying i will never be the mother of an robber. i will never be the mother of an evil person i will not give birth for trouble no i like you to pray the covenant of your presence with my children with my home with my business pray in the name of Jesus COVID-19 will not take the life of my children in the name of Jesus preservation by the spirit while they are coming out if you need to rededicate your life to Jesus come stand here but while that is happening please let's pray we came for a conference mention your children by name mention your sin in the name of Jesus divine presence May your presence give them jobs. May your presence give them children. May your presence give them influence, wealth. Hallelujah. Now for all of you in front here, I salute you. Thank you for summoning the courage to come. The Bible says, blessed is the man who God causes to approach him. Divine presence is better than money divine presence is better than a business idea divine presence is better than intellect 
the greatest gift God can give those he truly loves is himself. Listen, the height of intimacy and, and showing that you love someone is to give yourself. So when God gives you himself, he's giving you everything. Please lift your right hand high to the heavens. And in case you are seated in the congregation and saying, I'm ashamed I came with my brother, I came with my sister. We are not pretending in this conference. This is a genuine encounter. If you still need to run to join them and the Holy Ghost is asking you, run quickly and come and join them. Run quickly and come and join them. Those of you in front, I celebrate you and I salute you for coming. My sister is coming. Quickly, please come and join them. Say after me, Father. One more time, say, Father, I come to you just as I am, unable to help myself, unable to lift myself. But I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he resurrected for my justification. And tonight, I make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, my King. I declare that nothing and no one will take his place in my life. From today and forever, I move forward ever and backward never. I am a benefactor of the life of God. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I salute you for making this noble decision. There are officials giving you a card. I don't know, are you seeing them now? Or they go back to their seats? Okay, what will happen is, okay. Um, as you go back to your seats, please do well to fill those cards legibly. Am I correct on that? Okay, so they fill the cards legibly and then just wave it to an official who will collect it in Jesus' name. Let me challenge you, we still have two sessions, the first and second service tomorrow. I'll be sharing with you something powerful about the presence of God and then somewhere in the service we'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick and just speak. Help that lady, please. Okay, all of you who are here, please do me a favor. Just follow this. Our mothers, help that lady under the anointing. Just someone, just wave your hand so they see you. Please follow this, our mother. Let's celebrate them as they go. They'll have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so you follow them. Praise the Lord. So please do not miss tomorrow's service, first and second service. If I'm you, just pay the price to stay. It's a conference. First, let's honor our mothers. Let's honor the women. And then second, because it will be an opportunity. I'm going to be praying over the sick. And because of the times we live in, some stay far. And we must respect the journey. But please, I'd like you to come tomorrow with a hunger and a desperation. Praise the Lord. And I want to make a request if, if um, our father, uh, Pastor uh, ben and, and the Women Fellowship, the, 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 the group, the executives, if you will allow me, I want to plead and make a request that people come with the prayer request, something that they are trusting that God must end in their lives. If you permit me, then we can request it so that tomorrow, whether in the first or second service, we can have it here and we're going to pray and let the Lord that answers by fire, the one whose presence, the mountains keep like lambs. Are, are we together? Is that possible? Okay, so tomorrow, please do well, including those who may not make it. Please ask them to write their request. Those of you who are following online, I believe that there may be a link or a platform for you to send in your prayer requests somewhere in the course of the service, the first or the second service, as we're praying and ministering over the needs of people. We're going to pray over those requests. You have a child that you are trusting.